Noise. What's up? This is Omar from DeviantNoise.com, the best place on the planet for complete beginners to learn how to make music. I want to talk about how you get your music on Spotify or Tidal or Apple Music or all the other streaming services. How is it done? Now we've got a complete, detailed, step-by-step walkthrough, complete with screenshots of exactly what you need to do to get your music onto all of the streaming platforms out there. Link in the description below. Make sure you check that out if you want more details about exactly how to do that. But before we get into anything, the first thing that I gotta say is that a lot of people, when they first start making music, they wonder, how do you get your music on Spotify? How do you upload your music to Spotify? But before you even start thinking about that, you need to start thinking about the quality of your music. So you don't need to put your very first song onto Spotify. You might be really excited about it. You might think it's f***ing great, but you don't have to put it out there. I would say you shouldn't start uploading music until you're sure that you've got something that's really great. Don't just put out every song you ever make. Kind of curate your very best stuff and put that stuff out there onto all of those streaming sites. Now you can release whatever you want onto sort of the self-publishing platforms like SoundCloud and Bandcamp and things like that. There is a billion songs every second being uploaded to these platforms. You don't have to put every piece of music that you make out there into the public. You can if you want to. A lot of these services, like we're going to talk about, offer unlimited releases. It doesn't mean you should. Make sure your quality is great. If you're just starting out songwriting or making songs, making music, maybe you just want to build up a catalog to, you know, really see improvement and progression in your songs and your songwriting and your ability to craft a piece of music. I always say, if you're just starting out, make a hundred songs. Get through those first 100 songs as quickly as you can. You don't have to put any of them out. That's just a practice. That's like, you know, getting your reps in. And then once you start to make music, curate a collection of your best songs that you want to actually release out into the public. Even if you want to put out like a song a week or a song a day, curate the very best songs that you've created after you've gone through the practice phase where you're really learning your skills and honing your craft and finding your sound and getting to the quality that you need to be to compete in the market today. So if you do have music that you really really love and you think is really high quality and you want to get it out there into the world how exactly is it done well unfortunately you can't just upload your stuff to spotify like you would to something like soundcloud you have to go through a digital distributor or an aggregator what they can do is they can get all of your music out to all of the different platforms on the internet a lot of these companies like spotify and deezer they don't work directly with artists so you got to go through one of these other companies to get your music out there spotify actually used to have something where you could upload your music directly to Spotify through something called Spotify for Artists, but they no longer allow that. They still have Spotify for Artists, but that's more to manage your profile, upload different artwork, and create little those short little videos sometimes you see on some songs. That's what Spotify for Artists is for. You can't use that to upload your actual music to Spotify. Again, you got to use one of the digital distribution companies out there. And there are a lot to choose from, but our two favorite and the two favorite we think are the best in the market are TuneCore and DistroKid. Now, full disclosure, we are affiliated and partnered with both DistroKid and TuneCore. So if you do decide you want to use any of these platforms to get your music out there, I'd really appreciate it if you use the affiliate links in the description below. Helps out the channel quite a bit, helps out the website quite a bit. We'd really appreciate it. TuneCore specifically is our preferred partner and the next video that I'm going to do is going to be about a comparison between TuneCore and DistroKid. So if you're interested, definitely check that video out as well. But we like TuneCore a lot. So what are the different steps in actually releasing your music onto these different streaming platforms? It's actually really straightforward in both TuneCore and DistroKid and even the other platforms out there, they make it really easy for you to do. Like I said, we have a complete detailed step-by-step breakdown with screenshots of exactly what you need to do at DeviantNoise.com, so check that out. But basically, you sign up for one of these platforms, you choose the release type, whether it's a single or an album, you enter your artist info, you enter all the metadata about the project that you're releasing, then you upload the artwork, you upload the audio file, to the song or songs that you're wanting to release. You choose any extras or add-ons that you want to add on to it. Pick a release date, hit submit, and you're good to go. Now, both TuneCore and DistroKid offer unlimited submissions, unlimited distribution, basically meaning that you could upload a new song every day to Spotify if you wanted. But like I said at the beginning of this video, you probably don't want to do that. You want to curate what you put out there, but it's good to know that for one low sort of yearly price, you can distribute as much music as you need and not have to pay per release. 
price, which used to be the way things were priced. So before you go over to any one of these platforms and start uploading your music, you want to make sure that you have everything ready. It's a lot easier to get this done if you've got everything good to go before you actually start the release submission process. What does that mean? First of all, you want to make sure that your songs are properly mixed and mastered by a professional that knows what they're doing. The reason for that is because you want to make sure that your song stands up to all of the other stuff that's on Spotify. All of the songs on Spotify have a certain loudness level. They have a certain a certain polish to them. And that's what mixing and mastering does. A lot of artists try to do this themselves. Some of them can do it really well themselves, but I would suggest you get somebody else to mix and master your music for you. So you have it done by an objective pair of ears. So they can kind of correct anything that's sonically incorrect with your song or your recording. The next thing you want to make sure is that you have a high quality master audio file of all of your songs. You don't want to upload MP3s. MP3s are low quality audio. You want at the very bare minimum 44.1 kilohertz 16 bit wave audio file. That is the sort of CD red book standard of audio quality. You want to make sure you have all of your music that type of format before you go on to release it to the public. Your mixing and mastering engineer, whoever you use, they should be able to do that for you no problem. They'll know exactly what you're talking about even if you don't understand what a wave file is. And the third thing that you need is all of your artwork and your metadata. You want all of that ready and handy good to go. You don't want to be, you know, running around trying to get different pieces of information. So make sure you have the artist names, project title, the artwork for the project. If you have a barcode ISRC number, you want to make sure you got that handy. You want to have information about the composers or the producers that you worked with, any collaborators. Make sure you have all of that stuff handy before you start the submission process. A lot of the times you're going to sign up for one of these companies and you're going to go through the list and you're going to realize, oh shit, I don't have that specific piece of information. So it's not the biggest deal if you don't have all of this stuff together before you start. But if you can, it's a good idea to have as much as possible ready before you start the process. So how much does it cost to actually get your music on Spotify? Like I said, both TuneCore and DistroKid, they offer unlimited submissions for a yearly price. TuneCore used to be a per submission basis. So you used to have to pay like 10 bucks or 50 bucks per song or album that you wanted to release. But now their price is $14.99. They have a free tier, but they're paid tier where you can actually release stuff to Spotify and other premium services. That starts at $14.99, goes all the way up to $49.99, depending on the features you want, depending on how many different artists that you need to release. If it's just you, you're the artist, $14.99 option should be totally good to go. DistroKid has very similar pricing. They used to be cheaper than TuneCore, but not anymore. As of this year, TuneCore is the cheaper, more affordable, and in our opinion, better option to get your music released. But DistroKid starts at about $19.99 for a single artist, goes all the way up to $79.99 if you are sort of a label and you have multiple artists that you want to release. Plus, they have a lot of add-ons and extras that you can tack on to that release. But those cost extra. Once you've paid and submitted your music, it can take a little bit of time to actually get your music onto those platforms. So how long does it take? Every store is different. So Spotify can take up to five days. Something like uh, Amazon Music can take up to like six to nine days. But then there are some stores that may take from one to three weeks to actually get your stuff live. So it's a really good idea to release your music at least a month before you actually want that song to be out. So if you have a release date in mind, try to get all of your submissions in at least a month before that. Two months is even better because it gives you a lot more lead time if you want that to show up on all of the different stores on the same day. If you start a release today and you submit it today and you want the release date to be tomorrow, it's not going to be out tomorrow on all of the different platforms. It's going to take a few days for that to happen and it'll kind of be all over the place. So make sure you give yourself enough lead time before you actually want the song to be out in public. So you might be wondering when you use these companies exactly where does your music show up? It shows up to all of the main platforms that are out there that cater to music fans. So it'll definitely do your Spotify, your Tidal, your Apple Music, your Pandora, your Deezer, all of those main sort of bigger platforms that everybody knows about. It will be on those platforms. But in total, both DistroKid and TuneCore, they offer distribution to 150 different stores and they're constantly adding new platforms as they come on. So it's 150 or more stores that your product will be available at. You can definitely check out either website, TuneCore or DistroKid to see a full list of those stores. But basically your music is going to be everywhere and that's what you want. You want your music to be everywhere, but that's not it. Once you have your music out there in the world, your job is not done. That's when the work actually begins. A lot of people just starting out in the music business don't understand that the real work is in the marketing. It's in the promotion. What comes after you actually release your song or your album to the public. And like I said, there's a billion songs a second or 
or some crazy number. That's not the actual number, but you know, you get my point. There's a ton of content that's being uploaded to these platforms every day. So it's going to be really hard for people to actually discover you. And your main job at this point is to build a fan base, to expose new people to your music. But you don't want to be spammy. Way too many artists, they fall into the trap of just spamming their links to everybody they know and becoming super annoying. Sometimes that can work, but you end up making a lot of enemies along the way because people just tune out. They Even if you're the best artist in the world, if you're spamming your links to everybody, it makes them not want to listen. When people spam their music to me, the first thing I do is delete that sh** and not listen to the song. So it's really a difficult grind. I understand it. It's tough to get eyeballs and attention on whatever it is that you're trying to get eyeballs and attention onto. That's the game. There are a ton of different strategies that you can use to market your music, but that is something that you definitely want to take seriously. Put a lot of time and effort into marketing yourself, into building your brand, and you also got to make new music all the time too. It's just the way the game is, but once you release your music, that's when the real grind starts. And I think uh, that's it for this video. That was it for me. Let me know what y'all think in the comments below if you have any thoughts about the whole music distribution process, if you have any tips on marketing your music. I'd love to hear them in the comments below. If you have any thoughts on who the best company to go with when you distribute your music is, I'd love to hear that in the comments below. If you thought this video was at all helpful and sort of enlightening you on how you get your music out there into the world, please hit that thumbs up. If you thought this shit was trash, hit that thumbs down. It's all good either way. I'd love it if you subscribe to the channel. We're going to have a lot more content coming out soon, hopefully, for beginners who want to learn how to make music. If you're ready for a music submission and you got some music that you want to release out into the world, I'd really appreciate it if you used our affiliate links in the description below for either TuneCore or DistroKid. Definitely check out the next video that's coming out, which is going to be a comparison between those two companies on which one is better. Spoiler alert, we prefer TuneCore. I'll let you know why in the next video. Thank you very much again for watching this video. I truly appreciate your attention. My name is Omar from DeviantNoise.com and I'm out. Peace.